RTX 5090. Details. Woo. Elon's not going to sue you. Woo. And Intel's integrated GPU. We got benchmarks and it's good. Oh, my. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. I'm this, Kyle. This Thursday, November 16th, 2023. What you got there, Kyle? I, it's a, um, I think this is the giveaway PC that we're going to be giving away tomorrow over on our Twitch stream. You can come watch our stream over on Twitch and you can earn points to win this PC. It's got a 14700K. It's got an RTX 4090 Galax Hydro, all in the height Y70 Touch, Corsair Dominator, Titanium, DDR5, and Aorus Pro X, I think is the name. It's a white motherboard with it's a white PCB. So it's, it's nice. It's a nice PC. You can win it. Come join us over on Twitch. Look at me be <laughs> but we might have to start upgrading our giveaway PCs to have 50 series sometime soon. And now we're getting more and more details coming out about these at least flagship version of the RTX 50 Blackwell GPU. This is coming from a well-known leaker indicating that we are still going to only get a 384 bit bus on the RTX 50 flagship, but it will be GDDR7, not 6X like we currently have, which is going to unlock a little bit, including the memory bandwidth. So one of the big upgrades that we're expecting here and and the well-known leaker is saying as a confirmation is 1.5 terabytes per second of bandwidth on the memory on the RTX 5090, which is a 50% increase from where we are right now on the RTX 4090. It's only a terabyte right now. Do I hear Moore's Law being revived? No. <laughs> no. Memory speed is not the same as transistor count and Jensen will come and turn your oven on to max heat in your household. It already is. He's, he's gonna set it even higher. He knows how to overclock your oven. Good. I want it that way. And he wants it that way too. He's gonna take over the world's ovens if you if you say Moore's Law is alive. He doesn't like it. Careful, we just said it twice. Moore's Law. Ah! And I tell you, we got more coming from today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their brand new line of Ice Mist AIO CPU coolers. Silverstone's designed these to be the best performing coolers for not only your CPU, but also the components around the CPU. You remember we saw these at Computex. Oh, these are those ones. Yeah. So it's available in 240, 280, 360, and 420 millimeters. They have an updated radiator, pump, and fan that should add to improve CPU cooling performance over their previous generation of AIOs so that you can push your latest Intel or AMD CPUs to its maximum potential. But what makes the Ice Mist coolers exceptional is this little IMF70 right here because you can stack essentially as many IMF 70 fans on top of the cooler as you can fit in your case. Like at Computex, I think they had a ridiculous amount. It was it's, hilarious. It's kind of cool. It's a 70 millimeter fan that can blow over your components like your VRM, potentially even cooling down your RAM, a hot spot around your CPU. The Icemist set of coolers is compatible with all of the latest CPUs that are out there. So if you're in the market for a new AIO CPU cooler, look no further than Silverstone's Icemist. You can get them again, 240 all the way up to 420. And you can get these IMF 70 add-ons to make sure that you're keeping the rest of your system cool. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring read today's video check them out in the description and you might want to add one of those imf 70s to cool down the vrm block on your asus evangelion it's Aval avalon it's actually even generally on well now they're fixing it asus says they're sorry and they're going to be replacing that but you can still cool it down with one of those imf 70s but they're offering a free replacement like it's a replacement part to fix the typo so i think it's the io block which is what i speculated would be the simplest way for them to do it and they are also extending the warranties of everybody impacted as well. See, I was looking these up on eBay and they are selling for substantially more than the MSRP. Like over a thousand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just for the misprinted ones. Well, there there's only misprinted ones right now. Yes. And so I think before the misprint became widely known, they were still selling for over a thousand dollars. So we don't know exactly how the market's going to shake out, but they are pricey because people really want them and it seems like they're sold out. That's the biggest problem. Like the PlayStation Portal. What a revelation that was. So we don't have this included in the doc or anything, but the PlayStation Portal literally sold out everywhere, despite everybody lambasting this device, saying that it was not worth it for most people. But they had pre-orders up for a very long time. And then as of today, like they sold out within minutes at various different retailers. And it seems like a lot of people like this and a lot of people wanted this. I was surprised. And these are selling for a lot on eBay. That's that, that's what triggered my rage. But not only did we get a portal yesterday, we also got the D-Brand skin for Lenovo Legion Go, and I think that this is like one of the sick 
sickest skins I've ever seen. I especially like the controllers. Oh yeah, yeah, they're they're a little darker and like like they're rounded and like the it, it just went on super nice. Yeah, I really like this. Anyways, continuing on. Speaking of uh, de branding, Microsoft decided to do that to their AI. No longer is it going to be called Bing Chat with Copilot or Bing AI or whatever the Bing it was. It is now just going to be called Microsoft Copilot. That is what their AI assistant is going to be called. No more Bing it around. Thanks. Better. It is. So this is just a rebrand Microsoft's doing as a whole. They had like a big AI event. They had Jensen out to talk about how like NVIDIA GPUs are powering Microsoft's AI, all of that like corporate fluffing that they do to each other. But love it when those guys fluff each other. Thank you, Kyler. Uh, one of the things that Microsoft said back when people asked them, why are you still calling it Bing? Why would you do that? Nobody likes Bing. Nobody wants to use it. This is a bad idea. They responded, it's a neutral vessel. So all the research from the branding team shows that people are basically neutral on Bing, which is generally a good thing. So we said, do we want to start from scratch or build on that? It has all the positive things. It's four letters, it has one syllable, it's global, and it has equity. So we said, we're going to stick with the Bing brand. I imagine like a character from the Hunger Games explaining this as like a PR thing. This is, yeah, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> and also like people being neutral on your brand means that they're apathetic. And that is probably one of the worst things you can have on your brand is nobody cares. Just nobody's thinking about it. I, yeah, like I, I would say Bing has a negative brand in my mind. That's my estimation. I think they finally realized that. So now it's Copilot, which I think is a much better name. Yeah, I think that's a good name. Even if it's three syllable, very simple to say. It gives the right idea. The AI is there to like help you along. I like it. I, I don't hate it. I like saying Copilot more than saying ChatGPT. Or Bing. Or Bing. Frick then. Well, more AI news. YouTube talking about how they're going to be combating all of the AI that's going to be rising on the platform shortly and discussing how they're going to address that. And that's going to be with a little label that pops up that says altered or synthetic content. So you know whether or not that this has been altered or synthetically made with AI. And part of this is because they want to make sure that viewers are being disclosed to if creators are making things with AI. They don't want to discourage people making synthetic videos whatsoever. Up safe. Not those types. So one of the things that I didn't even think about, but is a really good application for it, because like I've been wanting to use AI to help hot news branch into different languages, but like non-native English speakers being able to have an AI English speaking persona that allows them to communicate their ideas to a, a, a wider audience on YouTube outside of their own language, which is it's the same reason I want to use it. And then I, th I think it's a good idea, but essentially they want to have it there. If it's going to be more complicated things like politics or medical stuff, it's going to be very heavily disclosed that it's an AI generated thing. But if it's just like a regular video, it's going to be towards the bottom. Additionally, if you know, some of these things violate YouTube's policies, they are going to remove those videos and remove the people uploading it. So it's not going to stay on the platform yeah. forever. And they're additionally going to be making it so that music partners can request the removal of AI generating music that mimics an artist's unique singing or rapping voice. So rip AI Drake and The Weeknd's, whatever that one song was where they were trying to get it submitted for a Grammy. I don't recall this, but this hurts because I watch a lot of AI covers on TikTok. Also, I guess it's mostly just like AI Plankton sings all time low songs. <laughs> that feels uniquely and distinctly Kyle. Ah, <laughs> uh, and you know what's uniquely and distinctly Reese deals. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And today we're starting off with a real budget deal from LG with this 24 inch 1080p 100Hz IPS monitor. Currently going for only $79.99, making it $90 off and a great entryway into high refresh rate gaming. But the next up, we have this Lenovo IdeaPad 1, which is a 14 inch Celeron laptop, going for only $129.99, making it $120 off. It's not amazing, but this will hopefully be perfect for someone who needs something on a budget. And then lastly, we have this Razer 27 inch 1440p 160 5 hertz gaming monitor going for only $299.99 making it $500 off. The MSRP is a little bit crazy but this is one of those like showcase monitors that absolutely stands out. Every time I've seen one of these things it's literally the focus piece of the whole entire setup. It looks phenomenal. And with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to the other guys for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. All right, Reese, I'm gonna recant one of the bad deals I gave you earlier, which is the fact that Cybertrucks 
if you buy one and then sell it, well now, according to the motor vehicle purchase agreement, you won't get sued. Hey, they're changing their tune. They just seem to remove that clause from purchasing things with the Cybertruck. They're not going to seek injunctive release against you to make sure that you don't resell the Cybertruck. They might do it with the Roadster. The Roadster makes a lot more sense for them because so, it costs a quarter of a million dollars. So is it not, they're not doing that at all now? Correct. It's gone. Done. Interesting. Nobody bought one yet. So they could have done that. It's I, weird. But there was a like, hullabaloo, and Elon doesn't like when people are mean to him on social media. Honestly, I kind of see him as a bit more of a pushover for this because I've seen him like not back down on stuff that makes way less sense than this. Maybe somebody else has made this decision, and he's gonna find out that they made that decision and reinstate it. But who knows? I don't know. Whatever. But I know I can push Reese over with this one. The analog pocket is getting new colors. Tomorrow, you're going to be able to buy them in Game Boy Pocket slash Advance colors as of 11 a.m. Eastern in case you want one. And look at those colorways. Did you have a Game Boy Pocket? Mine wasn't red. I had a red Game Boy Pocket. I didn't have a pocket, but I like pink. So their previous special edition sold out within like two minutes. So in case you want one, might be the time to grab them. But I'm going to be grabbing this as soon as it comes out. Intel's new integrated GPU has finally been benchmarked on the Meteor Lake chips that are gonna be launching in December. And the numbers, Mason, they're good. They're very good. That's not what he says in that game. I don't know what game I'm even referencing, unfortunately. The numbers, Mason. I don't know when that is. The Madagascar uh, GameCube video game. Oh, thank That's you. That's the one. So it turns out that the new integrated GPU beats one of Intel's previous dedicated GPUs and gets close to the other one. So it's in between the A350M and the A370M. And in case you're wondering, how does that compare to AMD? Turns out with its Geekbench score, you can find out that the integrated GPU is a about 65% of the fastest version we know of AMD's integrated GPU. So the 780M on the 7940HS when it's like clocked to the max, right? But then compared to something like the 760M, it gets within striking distance of that bad boy. It is at 27 to 149 points, whereas AMD's is 28,550. So this is the 760M. That's gonna be what you're gonna see in a Z1 chip versus the Z1 Extreme. 780M's gonna be in the Z1 Extreme. So this is getting close to what we already see in some hand else out there, but the difference, there's huge, huge thing here. That 760M was benchmarked at 45 watts. Intel's was benchmarked at 28 watts. So if we can get a 45 watt version, which there will be in the Ultra 9185H, which rolls right off the tongue. These numbers and these names. These numbers, right? If we can get a 45 watt one, we could be looking at something that actually is incredibly competitive and like makes sense in a handheld situation. Integrated GPUs, eight Intel's finally competing. This is a space I, I love. I love integrated GPU. I love little APUs. They're yeah. my favorite. I think Intel actually having, I, again, continuing to have something to prove, even in the integrated GPU sector, is just continuously forcing AMD and NVIDIA to just be a little bit better. As long as Intel is gunning for it, I, I think this is great. Because yes. Intel, they do efficiency. Like, that that's the thing. So one of the responses I'm already anticipating in the comments is people regarding that AMD does have their new APUs coming out sometime early next year that are going to be on RDNA 3.5, so they should be faster than this. But we are talking about Intel in one generation going from dedicated GPU level performance into integrated level. We have to wait a couple more generations like this is not Battle Mage in an integrated. That's coming hopefully, you know, towards the end of next year, maybe early 2025. I would love to see that. Intel is starting to get competitive. I want to see more of this. They're good, good. No, nobody's going to talk about this, but in a year from now, hopefully people will be like, look, they planted the seeds. They did this. Yeah, that happens very regularly on Hot News. I talk about like things that I can see happening in the background that I'm excited about, like Apple replacing Intel. I first did a video on that all the way back in like early 2018. And then it all propagated recently with the M1 chips. They made that happen recently, but you could see them starting to go through the motions years ago. That's continuing to happen in different sectors. Now let's propagate some of your comments. A lot of X's tripping over themselves saying it is wild that AMD still releasing new 5000 series CPUs. They were first released three years ago and AM4 platforms over seven years old. The Intel equivalent age-wise would be them releasing new 10th gen CPUs on the LGA 1151 platform. Yeah, it's a good it's a good situation. Props to AMD for, for doing that. I don't think they're ever going to do it again. <laughs> I think they learned their lesson. Uh, they tried to screw consumers over with it at the last second, got called out walked it back, and now we're making less concrete promises for 
probably very clear reasons. Drubu says, those new Meteor Lake processors only go to just over five gigahertz. I'm thinking Intel is about to surprise us with their 3D V-cache equivalent. I'm interested to see what gets officially announced as the launch date gets closer. What do you mean? Only just over five gig what are you only just over do you know how recently we've got five gigahertz on laptop processors i know grandpa go back to bed like it's two <laughs> years ago go back to bed. two years ago but that's it it's not been that long what do you mean only what the heck man but uh i also don't think intel as 3d v cache equivalent like, coming on the pipeline anytime soon everything that they've talked about from an architecture standpoint seems to be that they're working on some other things and uh 3d stacking cache might pop up but i don't think it'd be in the laptop sector so we'll see we'll see That's how like it goes name in high school stacking cache <laughs> That's not bad. Haplo are half half that plot. Haplo Bert. Haplo Perti. Like it. This GPU with an NVMe slot thing reminds me of the 90s when every sound card came with an IDE connector to host a CD ROM drive. You're saying grandpa to me? Look at that comment. You don't even know what an IDE connector is. Now, what's a CD? Uh it stands for CDs. What's that? Compact discs. TK says, what are your thoughts about the leaked 4,000 super prices? I have not seen a single source that I trust release prices. So I think anything that's out there is just likely based on speculation more than concrete anything. And Nvidia's pricing is very routinely in rumors guessed completely wrong. And so it's best not to speculate on pricing. Like it's really hard to lock those things down. Even with the 40 series, like people were guessing at the pricing in rumors right the day before launch and they were still wrong. So some Sometimes NVIDIA gives us really good price stuff like $699 for the 1080 Ti, and then they shock everybody by giving us a $1,600 4090. You just never know. You just never know. Juan say, regarding Intel's APO, the official reasoning seems to be that it requires a lot of custom testing. This means it's not a hardware issue. Instead, it seems this should be considered more of an early release type of application. I do not have high hopes of getting this for 12th gen, but 13th gen should be on the table if their explanation is real. So it appears that it's a manual test that they're doing right now. And they're looking to potentially enable it with AI testing later on, like they could somehow automate this. But right now, because it requires every game to be tested on every configuration of processor manually it is taking more time get like a premium early access type thing to the the feature if you have a top of the line cpu that's a better way of explaining it should have been on the the marketing from the very beginning i probably would have said it like that if i was intel <laughs> not not after everybody is being like why are you doing this? And then then be like, oh, we don't we don't have any plans. Why don't you have plans? Oh, because it requires manual effort by actual employees to do. OK, great. That's good to know. Now I'm never going to bring it up again. Thank you for giving us this feature. Intel, it's really nice. I like it. <laughs> Crowbar saying, does this make the AM4 the best supported platform ever? For me, yes. In my lifetime that I've been aware of, yes. For most people who are gaming right now, probably. That's that's a long time for a socket to be supported. Seven years. That's ridiculous. And seven years like it used to be that like your graphics card obsolete you couldn't play new games that quickly oh wait that's still happening oh funny <laughs> emperor scotty said more about wrx 90 please it's less than a week away i want a full motherboard specs on all brands releasing at a car either way whether it's the car or the motherboard platform you were at the wrong channel for that i'm sorry emperor scotty that is not uh the type of content i find exciting thrilling or that i think the audience that i'm seeking to bring in relates to so probably want to go somewhere else for that and then nerdy pc builder says i think he's the only person on earth that calls the tie cards the 4090 tie i'm oh, not i'm started. I'm not. So there is one executive at NVIDIA that says it that way. Just one. I think, I believe his name's Jeff Fisher and he's the only guy who does it. Jensen calls it the TI. Jeff Fisher calls it the die. I choose to go back and forth depending on how my tongue is feeling at the moment. I'm saying it. Your tongue was feeling a little rough yesterday. Not because of the GPU. Your tongue could have felt something like this. Huh? Uh? We'll see you back here for more hot news tomorrow. I'm clean. I'm like, I'm reformed. I, I don't, I'm not tempted by <laughs> GPUs to lick them no more. I did my time. I've been to the depths of GPU licking.